Here in this video, I'm just going to remind everyone basically how we uh, made some functions. Not going to go into it in much detail, just make the functions and show you what they do. Right, so we use the keyword function, or func should I say. We use the name of the function, opening and closing curly brackets, and then we prompt whatever code we want to execute in here. Some code to execute, that's what we'll print out. Okay, so this is how we make a basic function, right? Now, in order to use a basic function, we essentially just use the function name followed by parentheses. We just run that and it should work. There we go. It's printed out this code by only using this name. So I don't have to copy and paste this code. Why is that useful? Oops. Why is that useful? Well, it's not so useful with a one line uh, function, but let's imagine that we wanted to make a bunch of print statements over and over again. In fact, I'll actually call this print several, uh, print S. S standing for print several, right? Normally, you'd want your function names to kind of relate to your code or, you know, to have some kind of, in, to indicate as to what they do, you know? So we're going to say F, 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 F. We want that first off. Uh, we want to print out, I don't know, Pokemon. Not sure why. Oops. Don't know why that happened. There we go. Pokemon like that don't know why we want to print it out but we just decided we do we want to print out the word freddy not sure why but you know apparently freddy's a good friend of ours so we just had to print that out for him and we're going to print out i don't know it's freddy too apparently uh suresh don't know what suresh is to be honest but whatever now when i just use print s i can print all of that right Oop, s is capitals i can print all of that yeah and now, instead of having to, you know, either copy and paste these four lines or write them four times, I just use the function name along with the parentheses and it executes all that. Imagine if this function contained a thousand print statements. You really had to copy and paste that, but it wouldn't be very hard to just, you know, write this print S with parentheses, right? So that's kind of the whole point of functions. Now, if you remember, we have functions that allow us to return maybe like a number, maybe a, a line of text, i.e. a string, but it allows us to return data types that we can use in a variable, right? So let's say I want to return an integer. We'll call it ret int. That's what I call the function itself. And we need to afterwards put a dash and a greater than sign, and then the data type that we want to return, squiggly brackets, and as normal, you know, we can do whatever we want. We can do print, hello, everyone. Blah de blah de blah of a code, whatever code we want, right? But at the end of it, we must have this keyword return in order to return something. And we must return something that is of this data type that we specified. So here I'm going to return 991. Okay, simple as, right? I'm going to put it into a variable. So I'm going to say variable A is equal to uh, ret int. Da -da -da, and then I'm going to print that out. So I'll print out a and what you'll see is that this hello everyone will be printed and the 991 will also be printed because I've asked for it to be printed there and that 991 is stored in variable a let's run that hopefully no errors excellent not a single one okay but you know sometimes these are a bit useless because I mean hypothetically the print statement you might want to do and return that okay then it's kind of useful but if you just want this return number value, really you can put it inside a variable and just reuse that variable. So why bother with these functions? Okay, well, there are better functions you can use, as you've seen, that have multiple arguments. So I'm going to make one that has arguments. We're going to call it uh, two args, okay? And instead of having sig1 and sig2, I'm going to say arg1 uh, is equal to num1 and arg2 is equal to num2, right? quite simple okay now what do these numbers relate to these this num1 and num2 is a variable name right this argument signals that when we say arg1 we put a value after it and arg2 we put a value after that and it signals that that value will be stored in there however we can't just store any 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 data type which we have to specify as the data type that we're going to use in the argument so we have to do this we have to put colon after the variable name we're going to use right now i also want to return 
an int here. I don't have to though. I don't actually have to return anything uh, just because I've used you know multiple argument type uh, thing here. So I'm going to return num1 times by num2. Okay, and then I'm just going to you know make variable b is equal to two args mm, arg1 and nine arg2 350 okay that's going to be a pretty big number right oops i nearly forgot there see that i'm rushing too much i actually have to put colon on there um don't, don't know why it's just a peculiarity of the language but basically after your argument name you have to put the val this colon and that separates the uh, sort of argument signaler from the value that you want to assign to the variable so for here for example i'm using argument one to signal that you know this this variable this 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 number this value is going to be held in this variable and this variable has to be an int so if i put a string that was hello world it wouldn't work and same for argument two relating to number two okay now i'll print b whilst i'm at it and we'll see what results hopefully it runs hopefully i haven't messed it up i haven't messed it up I've done very well. So that apparently is 34,650. Great. So that's a cool little thing we can do there. This is pretty much everything I've covered, right? I'm not going to go into much detail, more detail about that. You can make some pretty complex arguments with this. You can actually make more complex singular return uh, functions that don't have arguments. Not going to get into that. It's something you guys should run and experiment with. What I will show you. It's a cool thing that I found out recently. You can actually uh, use functions that iterate over lists, uh, over arrays. Sorry, I call them lists because of Python. So we'll call it func um, ret sum array. So that means return the sum of an array. And inside the brackets is the argument. It's going to seem strange, but we're going to put numbers. And we're going to say that numbers has to be an int right has to be an int okay but it has to be this okay it has to be an array int okay and then we are going to specify that our return type will be an int right simple enough now we're going to say that we've got a variable called sum okay it's equal to zero fair enough for now and i'm going to say for i in numbers, which is our variable, it's also our signaler, but don't worry, this will work. I know it's completely against the grain of everything, but it will work, right? We're going to say that sum plus equals i, okay, which means iteration, okay? And then afterwards, we're going to print sum. Now, this is a bit experimental and it's not to be taken too seriously. I'm just going to run it to make sure it's right. Missing return in a function. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to return that as well, obviously. So we'll return sum, obviously. I should be fine that. Yep, that's right. It's fine. Now, we're going to need an array that we can actually... Uh, we can actually sum up so we're going to say variable r1 meaning array one is equal to and we'll just put some random numbers in here right easy enough and i don't know if it's going to work to be honest but i'm going to see i'm going to see we we'll can say variable sum one is equal to ret sum array and we're going to say numbers is r1 right i don't know if this is going to work so do bear with me here i think it will though and it has how great is that 145 we get so by this methodology we can actually loop through arrays i won't really get into that and i'm not going to get into the rest of that just wanted you to practice and do remember you know to type along with all of the videos not just these practice ones and you know try and practice on your own anyway thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed